Good morning. Welcome to worship here at Salem Lutheran Church in Deerwood, Minnesota on this Palm Passion Sunday. It's good to have you here with us this morning. Especially want to welcome those of you who are among us who maybe have not worshiped with us before. We're glad you're here and, and we welcome you to worship with us um, every Sunday at this time on, um, or at any time on recording, or um, when, when we can worship together again um, in person here in Deerwood. Just a few announcements to highlight before we get started this morning. First of all, um, as you know, COVID-19 is affecting all of us right now. The church is closed and worship services and all activities here at Salem have been canceled until further notice. Um, Salem worship will be posted on YouTube as long as public worship events are canceled. And you can access it on Salem's website, um, salemdwd.org, or on Facebook. If you, this is an experiment, we're not really pros at this, so if you have any comments, please share them with us. We'd like to hear um, so we can do this better in the future. This is Holy Week, um, and Holy Week means there's all sorts of things happening. The most um, important week in the church year for Christians. Um, this, this Thursday is Monday Thursday, um, Friday is Good Friday. There will be services also posted on our web website those days. Um, there will also be Easter Sunday worship that will be live streamed on Facebook and posted on the website. We want to wish you God's blessings as you and your household celebrate this, this week, sheltered in place, but yet our Lord is Lord even there. Worship does not happen without skilled help, believe it or not. It's, it's not just me around here. Um, here today in these last several weeks um, have been a group of technicians and musicians and, and vocalists who, who um, we've been calling the Nitty Gritty Sabbath Keepers. And I want to thank all of those folks who have been helping and, and, and being part of this worship service and make it, making it happen. <clears throat> Um, one message we have from the outreach team here at Salem. Um, if anybody needs help with picking up items that you need, such as personal care items, prescriptions, or groceries, um, please call Don at 320-267-7770, and they will gladly pick them up for you and leave them at your door. Um, it's be the, the fewer people we have running around, the better, and they'll do that as long as is possible. Pardon me? No script orders this month. Oh, no script orders this month, I've just been told. So that's, um, just keep that in mind. Thank you for all of you who have um, been part of the script program and, and helped our outreach, um, outreach ministries. We begin our worship today by remembering the grace of, of God and the mercy of God that brought us into this family of faith um, in the words of the confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God who is present, who gives life, who calls into existence the things that do not exist. Amen. If you were to keep watch over sins, O Lord, who could stand? Yet with you is forgiveness, and so we confess. All gracious God, have mercy on us. We confess that we have turned away from you knowingly and unknowingly. We have wandered from your resurrection life. We have strayed from your love for all people. Turn us back to you, O oh God. Give us new hearts and right spirits that we may find what is pleasing to you and dwell in your house forever. Amen. Brothers and sisters, receive the good news. God turns to you in love and says, I will put my spirit in you and you shall live. All your sin, whatever it is, is forgiven in the name of Jesus Christ, who is the free and abounding gift of God's grace for you. Amen. This morning we're changing the order a little bit. It is Palm Sunday, um, and, and the, the main event today is the reading of the Passion History from the Gospel of Matthew. Um, so just a few words from me um, before we do that, and then we'll get to the main event of Palm Sunday and, and the Passion that followed. 
Sisters and brothers in faith, grace to you and peace from God our Father and from our Lord Jesus Christ. I'd like to read the Palm Sunday um, text from Matthew, the 21st chapter. When they had come near Jerusalem and had reached Bethphage at the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two disciples saying to them, go into the village ahead of you and immediately you will find a donkey tied and a colt with her. Untie them and bring them to me. If anyone says anything to you, just say this, the Lord needs them, and he will send them immediately. This took place to fulfill what had been spoken through the prophet, saying, tell the daughter of Zion, look, your king is coming to you, humble and mounted on a donkey, and on a colt, the foal of a donkey. The disciples went and did as Jesus had directed them. They brought the donkey and the colt and put colt and put their cloaks on them, and he sat on them. A very large crowd spread their cloaks on the road, and others cut branches from the trees and spread them on the road. The crowds that went ahead of him and that followed were shouting, Hosanna to the son of David! Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord! Hosanna in highest heaven! When he entered Jerusalem, the whole city was in turmoil, asking, Who is this? The crowds, were, the crowds were saying, this is the prophet Jesus from Nazareth in Galilee. Here ends the reading. So you heard the reading. Um, make no mistake, this is no accident what's happening here today. Jesus knew exactly what he was doing when he rode in a t- into town on a donkey that day. He was making a statement And everybody in that crowd understood the statement, or at least they thought they did. He was entering town as the returning king, the descendant of David, the one everybody was waiting for and hoping for, the Messiah. And everybody knew that the Messiah's first order of business would be to overthrow the Romans and set up a new government. The Romans knew it too. And Jesus was a threat So they had to treat him the same way that they would treat any threat to their authority. They crucified him, just like they crucified every rebel and insurrectionist that they could get their hands on. Just as we would eliminate any Al-Qaeda or ISIS leader we could find. And the tragedy is, both sides are half right. He did come as Messiah, but they completely misunderstood what that was about. Messiah is not about regime change or patriotism. The Messiah is about establishing a kingdom where God is poured out on all people, not just the ones on our side. And he really was a threat. And he still is, I suppose. Because he threatens the way we do things here. He threatens the way we try to buy our security by hoarding our wealth or our toilet paper or whatever it is. He threatens the way we exercise our power by serving ourselves rather than others. He threatens the way we divide ourselves into tribes, us versus them, drawing drawing lines and making rules about who's acceptable and who's not. No question, Jesus is a threat to the way we do things here. He rides into the confusion and the chaos of our day just as he did his own. And he continues to threaten our reliance on anything other than God's pure mercy. He rides into town proclaiming the kingdom of God. And he called people to pledge their allegiance to God's kingdom rather than any other. And he journeys to the cross, a predictable outcome Because anyone who calls the authorities of the powers that be into question can expect to be attacked and crushed by the political machines. But he goes to the cross anyway, willingly, exposing the naked expediency of the powers as he goes. In the hands of the powerful, truth becomes malleable. Facts are shaped by false witnesses and selective evidence to help them reach the verdict that they want and justify their actions. 
But exposing their corruption is not why he does it. He speaks the truth to the poor and the powerful alike. He does it because he loves them and he loves us. And he is willing to go through any hell to reach us. Pilate knows a railroad job when he sees it, but he gives in to their demands. Better one man die than ruin his weekend with a riot. He washes his hands to save face, but 20 seconds of scrubbing will not wash away these choices. Someone has said the only thing needed for evil to prosper is for good people to do nothing. Pilate chooses to do nothing, and the innocent one is led away to a terrible fate. Jesus' journey to Golgotha on a cross was not predetermined, but it was predictable. And it exposes just how fickle we are and how far we will go to get rid of them. And we will learn next Sunday that you can't eliminate the threat Jesus posed by violence because our Lord's love overwhelms everything that divides us. Our Lord's generosity overwhelms corruption and greed. Our Lord's life overwhelms the power of death. And one day, the hosannas will not ring hollow. One day, every one of us will yield to the mercy and majesty of God. As Paul wrote in Philippians, one day every knee shall bend and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. I can't wait for that day. Come, Lord Jesus. Amen. And we sing this Palm Sunday. We sing all glory, laud, and honor to welcome the King. Let us pray. Everlasting God, in your endless love for the human race, you sent our Lord Jesus Christ to take on our nature and to suffer death on the cross. In your mercy, enable us to share in his obedience to your will and in the glorious victory of his resurrection, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The servant of the Lord expresses absolute confidence in his final vindication, despite the fact that he has been struck and spit upon. This characteristic of the servant played an important role in the early church's understanding of the suffering, death, and resurrection of Jesus, a reading from Isaiah chapter 40. The Lord God has given me the tongue of a teacher that I may know how to sustain the weary with the word. Morning by morning he wakens, wakens my ear to listen as those who are taught. The Lord God has opened my ear and I was not rebellious. I did not turn backward. I gave my back to those who struck me and my cheeks to those who pulled out the beard. 
I did not hide my face from insult and spitting. The Lord God helps me. Therefore, I have not been disgraced. Therefore, I have set my face like flint, and I know that I shall not be put to shame. He who vindicates me is near. Who will contend with me? Let us stand up together. Who are my adversaries? Let them confront me. It is the Lord who helps me. Who will declare me guilty? The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And a reading from the 31st Psalm. Have mercy on me, O Lord, for I am in trouble. My eye is consumed with sorrow, and also my throat and my belly. For my life is wasted with grief, and my years with sighing. My strength fails me because of affliction, and my bones are consumed. I am the scorn of all my enemies, a disgrace to my neighbors, a dismay to my acquaintances when they see me in the street, they avoid me. Like the dead, I am forgotten, out of mind. I'm as useless as a broken pot. For I've heard the whispering of the crowd, fear is all around. They put their heads together against me. They plot to take my life. But as for me, I have trusted in you, O Lord. I have said, you are my God. My times are in your hand. Rescue me from the hand of my enemies and from those who persecute me. Let your face shine upon your servant. Save me in your steadfast love. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And now I'll invite the nitty gritty Sabbath keepers to come forward at this time. And together we'll um, share the story, the story that, that we're all participating in this week. And this, this year is, is year A. We are reading Matthew, so we're going to be hearing the passion of our Lord according to Matthew. It's Matthew 26, 1 through 2766. The Passion of Our Lord Jesus Christ According to Matthew When Jesus had finished saying all these things, he said to his disciples, You know that after two days the Passover is coming, and the Son of God will be handed over to be crucified. Then the chief priests and the elders of the people gathered in the palace of the high priest who was called Caiaphas, and they conspired to arrest Jesus by stealth and kill him. But they said, Not during the festival, or there may be a riot among the people. Now while Jesus was at Bethany in the house of Simon the leper, a woman came to him with an alabaster jar of very costly ointment, and she poured it on his head as he sat at the table. But when the disciples saw it, they were angry and said, Why this waste? For this ointment could have been sold for a large sum, and the money given to the poor. But Jesus, aware of this, said to them, Why do you trouble the woman? She has, uh, she has performed a good service for me. For you always have the poor with you, but you will not always have me. By pouring this ointment on my body, she has prepared me for burial. Truly, I tell you, wherever this good news is proclaimed in the whole world, what she has done will be told in remembrance of her. Then one of the twelve, who was called Judas Iscariot, went to the chief priests and said, What will you give me if I betray him to you? They paid him thirty pieces of silver, and from that moment he began to look for an opportunity to betray him. On the first day of, the, of unleavened bread, the disciples came to Jesus, saying, Where do you want us to make the preparations for you to eat the Passover? He said, Go into the city to a certain man and say to him, The teacher says, My time is near. I will keep the Passover at your house with my disciples. 
So the disciples did as Jesus had directed them, and they prepared the Passover meal. When it was evening, he took his place with the twelve, and while they were eating, he said, Truly, I tell you, one of you will betray me. And they became greatly distressed and began to say to him one after another, Surely not I, Lord. He answered, The one who has dipped his hand into the bowl with me will betray me. The Son of Man goes as it is written of him, but woe to that one by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. It would have been better for that one not to have been born. Judas, who betrayed him, said, Surely not I, Rabbi. Jesus replied, You have said so. While they were eating, Jesus took a loaf of bread, and after blessing it, he broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body. Then he took a cup, and after giving thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you, for this is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. I tell you, I will never again drink of this fruit of the vine until that day, when I drink it new with you in my Father's kingdom. When they had sung the hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. Then Jesus said to them, You will all become deserters because of me this night, for it is written, I will strike the shepherd, and the sheep of the flock will be scattered. But after I am raised up, I will go ahead of you to Galilee. Peter said to him, but we'll all become deserters because of you. I will never desert you. Jesus said to him, Truly, I tell you, this very night before the cock crows, you will deny me three times. Peter said to him, Even though I must die with you, I will not deny you. And so said all the disciples. Then Jesus went with them to a place called Gethsemane, and he said to the disciples, Sit here while I go over there and pray. He took with him Peter and two sons of Zebedee and began to be grieved and agitated. Then he said to them, I am deeply grieved, even to death. Remain here and stay away from me. And going a little farther, he threw himself on the ground and prayed, My father, if it is possible, let this cup pass from me. Yet not what I want, but what you want. Then he came to the disciples and found them sleeping. And he said to Peter, So, could you not stay awake with me one hour? Stay awake and pray that you may not come into the time of trial. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. Again he went away and prayed for the second time. My father, if this cannot pass unless I drink it, your will be done. Again he came and found them sleeping, for their eyes were heavy. So leaving them again, he went away and prayed for the third time, saying the same words. Then he came to the disciples and said to them, Are you still sleeping and taking your rest? See, the hour is at hand, and the Son of Man is betrayed into the hands of sinners. Get up. Let us be going. See, my betrayer is at hand. While he was still speaking, Judas, one of the twelve, arrived. With him was a large crowd with swords and clubs from the chief priests and the elders of the people. Now the betrayer had given them a sign, saying, The one I will kiss is the man. Arrest him. At once he came up to Jesus and said, Greetings, Rabbi. And Judas kissed him. Jesus said to him, Friend, do what you are here to do. Then they came and laid hands on Jesus and arrested him. Suddenly one of those with Jesus put his hand on his sword, drew it, and struck the slave of the high priest, cutting off his ear. Then Jesus said to him, Put your sword back into its place, for all who take the sword will perish by the sword. Do you think that I cannot appeal to my father, and he will at once send me more than twelve legions of angels? But how then would the scriptures be fulfilled? Which say it must happen in this way? 
At that hour, Jesus said to the crowds, Have you come out with swords and clubs to arrest me as though I were a bandit? Day after day I sat in the temple teaching, and you did not arrest me. But all this has taken place so that the scriptures of the prophets may be fulfilled. Then all the disciples deserted him and fled. Those who had arrested Jesus took him to Caiaphas, the high priest, in whose house the scribes and the elders had gathered. But Jesus was following him at a distance, but Peter was following him at a distance, as far as the courtyard of the high priest. And going inside, he sat with the guards in order to see how this would end. Now the chief priests and the whole crowd were looking for false testimony against Jesus so that they might put him to death. But they found none, though many false witnesses came forward. At last, two came forward and said, This fellow said, I am able to destroy the temple of God and to build it in three days. The high priest stood up and said, Have you no answer? What is this that they testify against you? But Jesus was silent. Then the high priest said to him, I put you under oath before the living God. Tell us if you are the Messiah, the Son of God. Jesus said to him, You have said so, but I tell you, from now on you will see the Son of Man seated at the right hand of power and coming on the clouds of heaven. Then the high priest tore his clothes and said, He has blasphemed. Why do we still need witnesses? You have now heard his blasphemy. What is your verdict? They answered, He deserves, deserves death. death. Then they spat in his face and struck him, and some slapped him, and saying, Prophesy to us, you Messiah. Who is it that struck you? Now Peter was sitting outside in the courtyard. A servant girl came to him and said, You also were with Jesus, the Galilean. But he denied it before all of them, saying, I do not know what you are talking about. When he went out to the porch, another servant girl saw him, and she said to the bystanders, This man was with Jesus of Nazareth. Again, he denied it with an oath. I do not know the man. After a little while, the bystanders came up and said to Peter, Certainly, you are also one of them, for your accent betrays you. Then he began to curse, and he swore an oath. I do not know the man. At that moment, the cock crowed. Then Peter remembered what Jesus had said. Before the cock crows, you will deny me three times. And he went out and wept bitterly. When morning came, all the chief priests and the elders of the people conferred together against Jesus in order to bring about his death. They bound him, led him away, and handed him over to Pilate, the governor, when Judas, his betrayer, saw that Jesus was condemned, he repented and brought back the 30 pieces of silver to the chief priests and the elders. He said, I have sinned by betraying innocent blood. But they said, What is that to us? See to it yourself. Throwing down the pieces of silver in the temple, he departed, and he went and hanged himself. But the chief priests taking the pieces of silver, said, It is not lawful to put them into the treasury, since they are blood money. After conferring together, they used them to buy the potter's field as a place to bury foreigners. For this reason, that field has been called the field of blood to this day. Then was fulfilled what had been spoken through the prophet Jeremiah, and they took the thirty pieces of silver the price of the one on whom a price had been set, on whom some of the people of Israel had set a price, and they gave them for the potter's field, as the Lord commanded me. Now Jesus stood before the governor, and the governor asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus said, You say so. But when he was accused by the chief priests and elders, he did not answer. Then Pilate said to him, Do you not hear how many accusations they make against you? But he gave them no answer, 
not even to a single charge, so that the governor was greatly amazed. Now at the festival, the governor was accustomed to release a prisoner for the crowd, anyone whom they wanted. At that time, they had a notorious prisoner called Jesus Barabbas. So after they had gathered, Pilate said to them, Whom do you want me to release for you? Jesus Barabbas or Jesus who is called the Messiah? For he realized that it was out of jealousy that they had handed him over. While he was sitting at the judgment seat, his wife sent word to him, Have nothing to do with that innocent man, for today I have suffered a great deal because of a dream about him. Now the chief priests and elders persuaded the crowds to ask for Barabbas and to have Jesus killed. The governor again said to them, Which of the two do you want me to release for you? And they said, Barabbas. Pilate said to them, Then what should I do with Jesus, who is called the Messiah? All of them said, Let Let him him be crucified. crucified. Then he asked, Why? What evil has he done? But they shouted all the more, Let Let him be crucified. So when Pilate saw that he could do nothing, but rather that a riot was beginning, he took some water and washed his hands before the crowd, saying, I am innocent of this man's blood. See to it yourselves. Then the people as a whole answered, His blood be on us and on our children. So he released Barabbas for them, and after flogging Jesus, he handed him over to be crucified. Then the soldiers of the governor took Jesus into the governor's headquarters, and they gathered the whole cohort around him. They stripped him and put a scarlet robe on him, and after twisting some thorns into a crown, they put it on his head. They put a reed in his right hand and knelt before him and mocked him, saying, Hail, King of the Jews. They spat on him and took the reed and struck him on the head. After mocking him, they stripped him of the robe and and put his own clothes on him. Then they led him away to crucify him. As they went out, they came upon a man from Cyrene named Simon. They compelled this man to carry his cross. And when they came to a place called Golgotha, which means place of a skull, they offered him wine to drink mixed with gall. But when he tasted it, he would not drink it. And when they had crucified him, they divided his clothes among themselves by casting lots. Then they sat down there and kept watch over him. Over his head they put the charge against him, which read, This is Jesus, King of the Jews. Then two bandits were crucified with him, one on his right and one on his left. Those who passed by derided him, shaking their heads and saying, You who would destroy the temple and build it in three days, save yourself. If you are the Son of God, come down from the cross. In the same way, the chief priests also, along with the scribes and elders, were mocking him, saying, He saved others. He cannot save himself. He is the King of Israel. Let him come down from the cross now, and we will believe in him. He trusts in God. Let God deliver him now if he wants to. For he said, I am God's son. The bandits who were crucified with him also taunted him in the same way. From noon on, darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. And about three o'clock, Jesus cried with a loud voice, Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani. That is, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Then some of the bystanders heard it. They said, This This man is calling for Elijah. At once, one of them ran and got a sponge, filled it with sour wine, put it on a stick, and gave it to him to drink. But the others said, Wait, Wait. let Let us see see whether whether Elijah Elijah will come to save him. Then Jesus cried again with a loud voice and breathed his last.
At that moment, the curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. The earth shook and the rocks were split. The tombs also were opened and many bodies of the saints who had fallen asleep were raised. After his resurrection, they came out of the tombs and entered the holy city and appeared to many. Now when the centurion and those with him who were keeping watch over Jesus saw the earthquake and what took place, they were terrified and said, Truly, this man was God's son. Many women were also there looking on from a distance. They had followed Jesus from Galilee and had provided for him. Among them were Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of James and Joseph, and the mother of the sons of Zebedee. When it was evening, there came a rich man from Arimathea named Joseph, who was also a disciple of Jesus. He went to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. Then Pilate ordered it to be given to him. So Joseph took the body and wrapped it in a clean linen cloth and laid it in his own new tomb, which he had hewn in, in the rock. He then rolled a great stone to the door of the tomb and went away. Mary Magdalene and the other Mary were there, sitting opposite the tomb. The next day, that is, after the day of preparation, the chief priests and the Pharisees gathered before Pilate and said, Sir, we remember what that impostor said while he was still alive. After three days, I will rise again. Therefore, command the tomb to be made secure until the third day. Otherwise, his disciples may go and steal him away and tell the people he has been raised from the dead. And the last deception would be worse than the first. Pilate said to them, you have a guard of soldiers. Go, make it as secure as you can. So they went with the guard and made the tomb secure by sealing the stone. Turning our hearts to God, who is gracious and merciful, we pray for the church, for the world, and all who are in need. God of mercy, awaken your church to new proclamations of your faithfulness. By your spirit, give us bold and joyful words to speak that we may sustain the weary with the message of your redemption. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. God of mercy, quiet the earth where it trembles and shakes. Protect vulnerable ecosystems, threatened habitats, and endangered species. Prosper the work of scientists, engineers, and researchers who find ways to restore creation to health and wholeness. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. God of mercy, drive away fear and anger. 
that cause us to turn against one another. Give courage and wisdom to leaders who seek to lead us through this pandemic. Bring, bring peace and hope to healthcare workers and all who are helping us through. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. God of mercy, send your saving help to all those who suffer abuse, insult, discrimination, or contempt. Heal the wounded, comfort the dying. Bring peace to those suffering chronic or terminal illness. Tend to all who cry out for relief, especially today we pray for Tom Peterson, Jean Abelson, Justin Fort, Marion Erickson, Shelby Olson, Jerry Sanderson, Nikki Vying, and those we name in our hearts. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. According to your steadfast love, O God, hear these and all of our prayers as we commend them to you through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Now is the acceptable time. Now is the day of salvation. Holy God, speaking, spoken, and inspiring, bless you, unbind you, and send you in love and peace. Amen.
Go in peace. Share the good news. Thanks be to God.